can't help this. I'm forgotten. <laughs> okay. I'm giving honor unto the Spirit for you, for me, for our gone literary poets, but uh, whose words remain in this room with us, and for Lambda, for Antioch University, and for the gift and beauty and power of words. Amen. This is an excerpt from my novel, Not Without Passion, which uh, whispers a little of Langston Hughes's title, Not Without Laughter. Outside, the night is flavorful, spicy. The air vibrates with the night symphony. Insects chirping, grass dancing, over evening breezes, distant barking, neighbors' voices on the wind, an occasional car humming nearby, and the sonata of houses clapping and creaking, whining and singing. Shrouded in moonlight, the deck waits patiently for the show to begin. Off to the right sits a monstrous pot, its mouth tinny earlier when I poured pail after pail of water, hot water, into its fat belly. Tonight, it's a womb. Usually, it's a huge artistic arrangement for flowers and vegetables and spices and herbs. I had it emptied two days ago. Had it scoured inside and out thanks to Coltrane, who, bless his heart, would love to do more than service my lawn. So he jumps at whatever I ask, though I compensate him for every side order lest he misconstrues the fact He'll never be my man. Uh-huh. He's been around long enough to have seen my lovers and friends and their lovers, yet this knowing fails to dim the orange-red flame in his eyes whenever he sees me. That is definitely something I am releasing tonight for my rebirthing. The notion of falling in love with unavailable women. Speaking of bull, that is Coltrane's present and my history. Besides, now that I think about it, it's simple. Part of me cuts the rest of me off from love, from what I say I want. Wasted fucking energy is what it is. The fear of love separates me from the life I envision and the foolishness of thinking I'll attract the same plastic lovers from my past in passionless relationships. Trapped in being, I won't be able to say what's really on my mind like, please leave, Miss Mama. Nope. <laughs> There is no reason if I begin articulating the ones percolating on the surface of this train wreck, the gas below will become obnoxious and will be blown into bits in the explosion. Bye. <laughs> hold on, hold on. My labor pains, my labor pains are set to begin at 10.30 p.m. Now, according to my cell on this wrought iron end table, I'm five minutes away from the gestational fun. So, uh, I get still. Feel, <laughs> feel my empty lungs preparing for a magical new existence. Somewhere off in the yard, something moves. I hear a scampering, a quick rustle of leaves. Short of the police stepping out of the darkness to inquire after what I'm about to do, it's on. Then it happens. <laughs> At the appointed time, sharp, the Dolby sound system, piped to the deck, ruffles the evening air with a soft crashing of waves. Draped in the moon's amber spotlight, I untie the sash of my robe and lay it across the deck chair. In an instant, the night shifts its attention from the stars and focuses wholly on my flawless nudity. 
Thank you. Perhaps we're all guilty of this tonight in some way. <laughs> It is with pride and pleasure that I bring to you Tim Dorsey, a Lambda Literary Foundation nonfiction writer and a wonderful person. It's okay, because um, I'm Tim, and I'm the last reader. I'm the, the last of 25 readers. 